Good afternoon. <clears throat> My name is Mouse McCoy. Uh, I got a funny name. Anyway, started my career out as a professional motorcycle racer, stuntman turned action movie director. And I'd been dreaming about my next film. Uh, it was a big action film and it had 40 or 50 crazy wild cars in it. And I was thinking, how am I gonna build it? What does the future of making things look like? So I knocked on Autodesk's door uh, and started exploring that. And I also rang up my friend here, Felix Holst, uh, who was running Hot Wheels at Mattel, who knows a thing or two about design and designing cars. And uh, we started to look to the future. We found ourselves two years ago at Autodesk and very quickly realized that we were standing in the middle of all of these converging technologies. It was a very exciting place to be, but there wasn't really much tying them together. You know, we were looking at artificial intelligence and cloud processing and generative design and virtual reality, additive manufacturing. And it really inspired us. You know, we were, look we were standing there looking at it and just being like, this all means something. And very quickly, our mission, still with the narrative of how do we make a massive action movie with a lot of cars, but our mission came became, how do we tie this stuff together and what does it mean to the future of making things? And we looked at it as, you know, we, we were coming out of the era where kids in dorm rooms had changed the world in the previous decade, but I was all coding. Um, and as we were looking into the world of making things and making heavy industry, making cars, making machines, we started following this narrative that was kind of inspired by the world we had been in with Hot Wheels, where we were looking at kids with dreams and bringing that to life. And we developed this narrative. We asked ourselves, could three kids in a dorm room start a car company? We know it's easy to start a software company from a dorm room, right? It's just coding, but... Heavy industry, heavy manufacturing, that's a very different proposition if you want to start a company. So what emerged out of our research project, uh, the beginning of it is on display over in the Future Making Things arena, but the world's first car designed in full photo reel VR, engineered by artificial intelligence, made at the height of advanced manufacturing, and delivered by the supply chain of the future. So if you can use this, aggregated stack, if you will, to build a car, you can build anything. And it got really inspiring for us. So we launched our case study one. We're calling it La Bandita Speedster. You know, we put ourselves as the three kids in a dorm room. Um, we're, we're, not, we're not ashamed of the fact that perhaps we're from a different generation than those kids. And this is the car that we aspire to have. You know, I think if it really was a bunch of college students designing a car for themselves, it probably wouldn't look like this. But we decided we needed a vision that, that fit our, our ethos. Um, and so we decided to uh, point ourselves in the direction of making this car, this car, um, a reality. We started conventionally with, uh, you know, napkin sketches and sitting around a table sketching and, and, and ide ideating until we came up with a, a concept uh, for a lightweight sports car. Um, that we all felt pretty comfortable with. You know, the idea is to tie into the ethos of the early speedsters. It's a lightweight, it's a, it's a four wheel motorcycle. It's one purpose, to go fast and stay light. What was radical was the process that we went through. We went from sketch to rendering the fully photo real, full size 3D model in a matter of a couple of weeks. So we now were looking at a full photo real representation of what we wanted to build, completely collapsing that trajectory of two-year design cycles, going to massive clay, millions of dollars. We just achieved what the biggest car companies could do in a fraction of the time. And not only that, while we were in VR, we were also able to, to start checking from an engineering point of view, kind of fit and finish. You know, for, for example, we, we fitted the engine and transmission to the chassis in virtual reality. And then two and a half months later, when we came to fabricate the car, it fell perfectly into place because we'd already done a VR fit. The kind of thing that takes hours to do because things are heavy and you need cranes. We did it in minutes in virtual reality. And then, you know, once again, barriers to entry collapsing. <clears throat> you used to need a big wind tunnel to be competitive. And that was Ford had one and Ferrari had one. But now, you know, from a $35 million full wind tunnel to a $35 a month cloud subscription, we're able to run our CFD and our flow analysis in the cloud. And, you know, we were inspired by the first visions of generative design. I'm sure everybody here has seen this sketch of the chair. 
you know, we started overall with a 10.3 kilogram chair, or I should say Autodesk did, and ended up with a 2.9 kilogram chair that had an aesthetic that was totally wild that no human probably would have thought of. And the light bulb went off. What if we did that to a car chassis? So we went out and we needed to force loads. We were going to start with generative design, but generative design needs force loads. So we went out to the desert, we sensed up a conventional race car chassis, and we hammered it, and we pulled all the force loads that a car would go through. Um, this is uh, me stood in the desert beside the car off the mouse, had literally driven the wheels off it. So we knew our data was good. We knew we pushed it to the absolute limit. Then we tore the car down, and we, uh, we, we, we scanned the original chassis. We weighed it, 470 pounds gave us our target to beat. And we scanned it for the geometry, and once we had the geometry, we were able to upload it into Dreamcatcher. So we went from generative design, chromoly, and actually our weight is now down to 320 pounds. So a radical reduction in weight. Same process, same material, just new math. And that chassis, this is the chassis that you can see on the other side of the area on the Future Making Things Pavilion. The, uh, the, the car we actually fabricated in chromoly using traditional techniques. So same material same manufacturing technique using generative design saved us 25 percent of the weight of the original chassis and then we're headed off to the next generation of additive manufacturing and going out to print the titanium so the next phase for us as well is is importing all of that data once you've generated your chassis and we've already got all of the engineering data in the cloud we're beginning to experiment with the notion that you can use that data in a gaming simulation to capture real engineering results and in fact that if you feed it out into a game you can have thousands of test drivers running your running your vehicle through um a, a fairly comprehensive simulation in a, in a, in an um and, and give you the ability to gather huge data very quickly now this might not replace all real world testing but it could certainly jump you forward 70 percent um and again like just pancake the kind of development times in comp in, in complex engineering situations so we're entering a cool phase where generative design is spinning up radical designs and <clears throat> and solving problems and then additive manufacturing can now make those so it's getting to be a pretty exciting time um where we see this all headed is the idea that you can take every system in an automobile and every design challenge and break it down into simple steps using um software that's really moving into the world of the everyman what used to be a complex task for someone with 10 or 20 years experience is now becoming very, very accessible to everyone. The analogy we've been using is garage band. What used to be the, uh, the sole reserve of bands and musicians and record companies that had the finance to get into a studio and years of practice to become um, hit makers, garage band came along and made it drag and drop. The complexity was reduced to the point where anybody could sit and make music without, without really having had those years and years of experience completely democratize the process. What we see happening now in industrial design and engineering is a very similar process. The idea that you can break down a car into simple systems, you can pass out components, and then in this world of kind of distributed manufacturing and local assembly, you pass those components out, different factories around the country make different specialist components and send them back to you very quickly. There's no tool build, there's no need for millions of dollars of investment just to get your prototype made, and you can then assemble locally you could have your own workshop or maybe you've got a tech shop membership and you have the skills at your doorstep to achieve a working prototype. So this really means the democratization of big manufacturing and the every man with a dream can go solve large scale complex industrial problems and really get in the game of hardware. And we think this is pretty exciting and inspiring. And so at the start of this project, we asked ourselves, could three kids in a dorm room start a car company? Um, and looking at what we have on the stand at the other side of the, of the hall, we're well on our way to thinking, yes, yes, we think so.